G'day guys, we've got a lot to get through today, so let's get cracking. The next jig that I'm going to show you is a proper router jig to make this slat in the middle. Now it's the exact same shape as the leg except it's 25mm shorter on the front edge. Now technically this radius will be 25mm bigger than that radius and this radius will be 25mm bigger than that radius. But the overall shape is going to be so similar that the difference is like 0.3 of a mil. I can just use this edge to create that shape and it'll be close enough for this purpose. So what I want to do is I want to start off with a piece of MDF about 16 mil thick, 18 mil thick, that's good too. And I want to get this back straight edge parallel with this here because we can use that as a reference later on. So if I just use a marking gauge, it's actually set to 6 inches at the moment. And then I'll mark two lines, a line across the front, and also a line across the back just to give us a good parallel reference for later. Now I can go and cut my baseboard along this curved line and then we'll shape it properly using the router just like I did before. Double side sticky tape this template down to there and we'll copy shape that. And so now I can remove this template from my jig. Well, that was easy. And using this baseline that I put across here, which marries up with the back edge of my tracing template, I need to push this forward 25mm to line up with the front edge of my slat to line up with that. So if I make a mark 25mm away on there, Another one there.
that area in there now will be a direct copy of what I've marked here with the slat there. It's supposed to be uh, 39 and a bit. Right there. And we have 43 and a bit. Why have I got 43 and a bit? What have I done here? Oh, plus three and a half. Bugger. I forgot that the slats uh, set three and a half mil in against the leg there, so it's not plus 25, it's plus 28 and a half. So now if I measure this area here, I have 79 and a half, and from this line to the edge, I have 79 and a half. So this now matches my slat. And with all that done, that's all wrong. What I actually need to do is flip it over so that when I'm cutting, I'm going to cut downhill. See, downhill rather than rather than cutting up the hill. So I've got to do all of this on the other side. 79 and a half thereabouts. So that is exactly what we want. So then we can get some toggle clamps, put them on there, but we have to pack them up the same thickness as the material that we're going to be cutting. So in this case 20mm, these are just some scraps that I have under the bench. One about there, one about there. You don't have to be really accurate as to where you put these because I'm not going to be resting the timber up against this edge. I'll show you what I'll do in a minute. want to block at the end here so that the timber when we put it in there it's got something to rest up against so I use a screw instead of these blocks themselves to set the depths and the cutting length or the cut the length stop simply so if my router bit gets sharpened a million times and it started off life as a half inch diameter bit and it gets sharpened and sharpened and sharpened and becomes 11.5 mil but the bearing is still half a uh, half inch the the profile that I'll be cutting will actually be the best part of a millimeter bigger than what it should have been so if I have a screw in here I can just wind that screw out a millimeter to reduce it to compensate for the sharpening oh well, that'll do it So that's it there, that's a good quality router jig. It'll lock your piece in here, your references on your screws there that you put in there. You've got your cutter over here cutting downhill and you've got a good, good solid part to hold on to and then you can just slide along. Now in order to cut yourself with this thing, you physically have to let go of the thing and put your hands into the cutter. Or you can do something stupid like this, like Oh, now, you, now you can cut yourself. Now I'm going to rush around and get some timber ready so that I can get these machined up before the end of the day because I'm getting really late in the day now. Quick, quick, quick!
got a very quick changeover. This is one of the reasons why it's so good. Well there you go guys, you got the two templates or jigs for the router table that are commonly used by myself. I, I prefer these ones because it's safer, it's, it's a hell of a lot quicker once it's all set up and ready to go. But if I needed to make more of these tomorrow, which it just, which it just happens to be, I need to make another 14 of them because I only made two today. I'll be ready to go, I'll just drop the timber in there. Clamp that down, clamp that down, unclamp it, swap it over and go. Whereas with these things, you get the sticky tape out which costs money and it's not cheap. Sticky tape it down, press it down, make sure it's aligned absolutely perfect as you're sticking it down. Then buzz around it and it's quite awkward to hold because you've got no handles here. And if you were to put a handle up here, you're likely to twist that off the timber and you lose your sticky tape so that's not a good idea and so so yeah these aren't these aren't great but they do have their place in my shop I use them because I didn't want to make a full-blown jig for this like that because I'd need one for here and then I'd need another one on this side and that side so I'd need need to make two jigs for four legs it's a lot of work and I'm not a fan of work I'm a fan of fun and on that note, I'll see you tomorrow. And I almost forgot, Happy New Year!